Hi, this is John from Sonic Drive Studio. Welcome to the second part of our first Rock Mix tutorial. Just like in the last video, we're going to take a look at the intro tune and its mix. To listen to the full tune, please click the link below. Last time we focused on the drums. Today we will take a look at the guitar and bass parts as well as some other things. So the guitar I'm using is a Line 6 JTV 59 Variax. It's a great modeling guitar. It's basically a normal guitar with digital modeling features. So next to being a great guitar, it also models highly sought after vintage and acoustic instruments. In this track I'm using the magnetic pickups as well as the modeling. For the amp tones, I'm using an XFX XL by Fractal Audio. I'm a big fan of Fractal Audio and their products because the quality is always top notch and they're constantly improving their products. The amp tones sound very good and realistic and the effects are stunning too. We're also using the recently released Reverb plugin from them, which is great. More on that later. With digital amp modeling, one very important aspect of getting a great and realistic sound is the cab modeling. Impulse responses of real mic guitar and bass cabs have been a standard for years now. At Sonic Drive Studio, we use Ownhammer impulses. Ownhammer is a great company with years of experience. Over the years, they've really refined and perfected their craft and are releasing top-notch products. I will be doing more videos about Ownhammer IRs in the future. Check out their website to see what they have to offer at ownhammer.com. Okay, let's start at the top and work our way down. Over here we have the clean guitars from the intro. Let's take a listen. So it's a nice and clean sparkly guitar tone that has a little bit of an edge to it. I used my Line 6 Variax for this one, of course, and uh, I used the Telecaster model in it with a neck pickup setting, which is cool for clean tones. Let's take a quick look at the preset in the Axifix that I'm using. First up, I'm using a compressor block to even out the dynamics a little bit. This is great for clean tones. I almost always do this. Then the amp block. I'm using a Citrus A30 Dirty. It's not really clean, it's more of an on the edge of breakup type of tone, but I usually like clean tones that have a little bit of dirt in them. The settings aren't really spectacular, it sounds great without much tweaking. And then for the cab block, I'm using an Ownhammer 4x12 Marshall Mode 4 from the upcoming Heavy Hitters collection. It's going to be a very good pack, very versatile. I'm using the T75 speaker option with the JS Mix. Let's see what I've done on this track, processing-wise. Of course, just like with the drums, I use the virtual tape machines. We can do an AB here to see what those do to the clean tones. So again, with the plug-in on, the guitars just get a little bit more life. If you turn it off, it's almost like they become a bit more flat and go a bit more to the background. When you turn it on again, it just sounds a little bit better. Then we have the virtual mix rack going on, of course. I'm using the FG76 preamp here. It's based on a vintage preamp. It adds a little bit of color. Just like with the drums, you can drive this one pretty hard. We can see what that does. So 
so if you push it you can really crush the sounds. It adds an interesting overdrive effect. Once again the virtual channel. We can also AB this on the clean guitars to see what it does to the tones. So once again this plugin adds depth and warmth. I love it. I'm also doing some lift here. Just adding some highs to add even more sparkle. We can also AB this one. I'll turn it off and on for you as we play the track. So as you can hear, it really adds presence to the tracks. I love this on guitars and I highly recommend trying it out on guitars. Clean guitars, but also distorted guitars. It just works great. Next up we have the FGS again. I'm filtering out quite some lows, uh, up to 126 hertz, which is needed in this case, because the guitars have a lot of low end going on, which you'll hear in a second when I AB this. I'll also show you what I'm doing with the mid bands and what kind of frequencies I'm cutting here. I'll do an AB first. So with the plug-in off, um, the guitars sound a bit too thick and they're occupying a bit too much space, so to speak. So the filter here is taking care of the low end and these two are taking care of some mid frequencies that I'm not really digging. I'll boost these so you can hear what frequencies I'm attenuating. So with this band I'm cutting a kind of um, a shrill high frequency that's kind of piercing. When I'm EQing guitars I usually look in this area for spots that aren't really pleasing to the ear. Let's check out this one. Yeah, so that area sounds really boxy. I like to cut some of this out as well. This will make some room for the bass guitar as well as the drums and other stuff that we have going on in the mix. We can do an AB with both EQs on and off. Let's go. First I'll turn them off and then I'll turn them on while we play the track. it's interesting to also do this in the mix so you can hear what difference it makes inside of the mix. Here we go. So high lift really adds some presence and the low filter here is really taking care of all the unnecessary low end that's going on. It sounds great. So over here we have the FG401 to smooth out the dynamics a little bit. This really works well with clean guitars. 
The attack is set quite slow so that the pick attack isn't crushed and it still comes through. This will make sure that the guitars still stay present in the mix. The pick attack is quite important to that. We can do an AB with the entire mix rack on and off, first soloed and then in the mix. As you can hear, there's also another guitar going on here. It's a simple Leslie rotary sound. I really like how that guitar sounds with the rotary. Let's take a listen to it soloed. It's nice and gritty. So virtual tape machines once again. And here are some preamp and VCC, of course, I'm boosting some high mids here to make it a bit more present in the mix, a little bit of highs, and of course, low shelf to remove unwanted low frequencies. All right, next up we have the clean slide guitar. Let's take a listen. Sounds pretty cool. Once again, tape machines. It's getting old, but it's still sounding great. Virtual mix rack, once again with the virtual preamp collection. Virtual channel, a little bit of EQ, not a whole lot. Once again, some high mids to bring it out of the mix more, basically. And bomber again. Yeah, this helps. Um, to push it a bit more forward. I'm having it set on the present setting here. We can do a quick AB with all the plugins on and off. So it's kind of subtle but uh, it really brings the guitar forward a bit more and makes it sound more 3D again. Now let's take a look at my favorite part, the rhythm guitars. I really, really enjoy how these sound. Um, I can show you the preset on my Axifix here. So the amp model that I used is a Friedman HBE. I think it's based on BE from Friedman. And um, yeah, it, it, it really is a really pleasant sounding rock guitar amp. It's really versatile as well. The settings are really basic. I'm adding a little bit of treble, a little bit of presence. The bright switch is on. I like to play around with this knob a little bit. You can really adjust the brightness of the guitar sound here. I recommend trying this out with every amp. Um, yeah, basic settings once again. Again, the Ownhammer Marshall Mode 4 from the Heavy Hitters collection. It will be out soon, so just hang tight. The reverb is on here, but when I recorded this, the reverb was off because I wanted to try the new Fractal Reverb, which I'll show you in a second. First, let's just take a listen to the guitars here. I'll solo this.
Yeah, so they sound great soloed, and they also fit in the mix very well. I love it. Um, there's not a whole lot going on on the solo tracks. Like I said, um, some reverb. Here's the new Fractal Reverb plugin. It's been out for a while now, but I've been really enjoying the sound I'm getting here. At the moment, I'm just um, simulating the reverb that I had going on in the preset. In the first soloed part that you heard, so the, the mono guitar in the middle, I have the mix set a bit higher here. So I'm automating this. So when the guitar goes to stereo, the mix goes down a little bit. Listen. <laughs> It just adds a little bit of space and it adds a little bit of extra when it's soloed in the middle. When you play around with stuff like that, automation wise, you can give the mix a little bit more life and variation, which can be pleasing to the ear. Okay, so the other track also has the same reverb going on. It's just a little bit of room to give it a bit, little bit more life, so to speak. Let's do a quick AB with a reverb on and off so you can hear what that does to the sound. Here we go. Adding some room. Now let's head over to the um, plugin section, tape machines. It will be interesting to hear what this does to the distorted guitar tones. Let's take a listen and A B again. <laughs> So with the tape machine on, the guitar sound is a bit less hollow. The high end is more pleasing and it fills up the spectrum a little bit more in a very pleasing way. It brings the sound forward a bit more. Listen again. It sounds much better with the virtual tape machine on. Okay, let's open the virtual mix rack. And again, FG73. Let's AB it to see what it does for the guitars. does something very pleasing to the mid-range. It's subtle, very subtle once again, but I love what it does. This one will be interesting too. Distorted guitars really benefit from the virtual channel. Let's check it out. Again, kind of subtle, but it affects the mid-range in a pleasing way. Then we have some EQ going on. Let's start off by just listening to the tracks without EQ, and then I'll explain what I'm doing here. So I'm going to do an AB again. Here we go.
after these changes are all about making the guitars fit better in the mix. So I'm just going to play the guitars in the mix and turn this on and off so you can hear the difference. See how it changes how they sit in the mix. That's very important. Loving what that's doing, adding a little bit more hair and cleaning up some areas in the mid-range that we don't need for this mix. Let's start off with the FGN, adding a little bit of hair here. I love the, the high band on this, it sounds kind of gritty. Adding some a little bit of, uh, of high mid-range to make the guitars poke out of the mix a little bit. Nothing else, so let's just A-B it with this one only. So it's adding a subtle amount of grit, basically and placing them better in the mix. You should always look for a good frequency to boost, so be careful here. Don't boost harsh frequencies, boost the nice ones that you need to bring the guitars out more. And also, uh, with this one I'm just adding a tiny amount. Okay, let's A-B this one. So the low cut here is doing the most, as you can hear. It's removing all the unwanted low frequencies. When I'm tracking guitars, I prefer the guitars to have a bit more low end, just so it feels a bit beefier when you play the parts. But inside of the mix, I always remove the excess low end that you don't need, and that gets in the way of the bass guitar. This is very important when you're processing your guitars. Um, I can also show you what I'm doing with these, just A, B again, and I'll, I'll play around with these knobs so you can hear what it does. So that's a nasal and kind of honky frequency, just didn't sound very pleasing to me. Let's check out this one. That one was very clear, it's just the mud, it's kind of muddy, you don't need that. It's only going to get in the way of the clarity of the instrument. And again, adding some uh, high lift for extra hair, check it out. So yeah, that works great for these guitars. Now let's check out the lead guitars. I'll play them solo for you. Let's take a quick look at the preset that I'm using for the lead tones. For these tones, I'm using the Friedman HBE V2 amp, which is a newer revision of the same amp. It sounds a bit different. The settings aren't really special again, because this amp mostly works uh, with the standard settings. So just add a little bit of treble, added some presence, and I'm using the bright switch here to brighten the tone up a little bit. For these tones, I'm using a different cab again. What's well, the same cab, but this time with a different speaker option. 
it's the mode 4 cab with the EVH speaker also the JS mix which I love when I'm combining lead and rhythm guitars I like to combine different types of speakers that will complement each other well if you use the same speaker they can kind of mask each other a bit so this can help to separate the instruments more and give them their own little space so to speak let's take a look at the plugins virtual tape machines again that's uh, a B <laughs> cannot mix without that plugin anymore it just sounds so good we're removing some excess high-end because we don't need it we need that high-end for the cymbals and for the rhythm guitars because they need more hair than the lead guitars we can do another AB <laughs> You can even see the little peak here that I'm kind of ducking with this filter. It works because it's a little bit fizzy over there. It's not much, but just enough to have it cut there. Let's go to the mix rack. Again, FG73. Love this one. I love this one too, as you know, and what it does to the sound. FGN. Adding a little bit of beef at around... 500 Hertz and cutting some lows here because the bass guitar the rhythm guitars and the kick drum of course and the toms are already occupying this space so we don't want the lead guitars to have too much energy in the low end that's why I'm cutting this here and of course also cutting it here in the FGS I'm also very lightly cutting some unwanted frequencies here Let's do an AB with both EQs on and off. So with the EQ, we're basically thinning them out a little bit, which is a good thing in the mix. On their own, they sound pretty good, but all that extra low end is just going to get away of all the other instruments. So it's good that we're cutting that. Let's check out these frequencies here. <laughs> this sounds a little bit fizzy over there. It's a little bit unpleasing, so that's why I'm cutting this. Let's go here. Again, around the 2K area. Always look for that area to see if there are frequencies in there that you don't need. And Bomber again. This one works great for uh, lead guitars as it helps to bring them out more, make them more intelligible so you can hear them better in the mix. Let's AB the entire mix rack. Here we go. <laughs> Also in the mix. Let's see what else I'm doing here. I'm adding some delay. Very basic digital delay. And again, the fractal audio reverb at the same um, studio setting. I just like this one a lot. I can turn the mix up so you can hear the reverb a lot better. <laughs> I 
I love what that does to the sound. Okay, let's take a look at the bass parts and the bass tones. First, we'll take a look at the Exifix patch that I'm running here. So I've got two rows. The top row is taking care of all the low frequencies. I'm using a SV bass amp here with a compressor. In the cap block, I have the filter set quite extreme. So I'm cutting all the highs out above 370 hertz. The bottom row will take care of all the frequencies above that. So the mid, mid, high and high frequencies. I'm using a regular guitar amp here to add some crunch, a presence. There's a noise gate going on here to remove some hiss. And finally the cab lock again. <clears throat> this time I have the low cut set to about the same frequency as the high cut in the other block. Let me just play a quick riff for you. So the grit really helps the bass stand out in the mix more. This will make it easier for the listener to hear all the notes that you're playing underneath all the heavy guitars. Now I'm going to turn off the bottom row so you can only hear the bass frequencies. Then I'm going to solo the bottom row. So on their own they don't really sound good, but combined they sound pretty nice and huge. So the impulse responses are playing a huge part here as well. Let's take a look at what I have here. So for the bass part I'm using this IR from Ownhammer. It's from the bass pack that he has released. It's really great and versatile. Um, so this takes care of all the low stuff. It's a ribbon EQ'd file. And what I've done here in the other row is uh, I've selected a different one. What I like to do here is scroll through the different cabs to see which mid-range works well for the tone that I'm working with at the moment. I'll show you what I mean. So right now I have it set to the Ownhammer UK fat one, but if, if I desire a different tone, I'll just select a different one. Here we go. Now finally, let's take a look at what I'm doing to the bass guitar in the mix. First I'll play it soloed for you. Again, let's AB the virtual tape machines. adding some body and fullness. Now let's open the virtual mix rack and see what I'm doing there. Again, the preamp. Let's see what it does on the bass. Once again, very subtle, but I like the effect. Now let's AB the VCC. So 
So we have two equalizers going on here. First up we have the FGN, as I use in almost all my tracks. Adding some high end here. Adding some high mid frequencies to help the bass jump out of the mix more. And to emphasize the pick attack. Cutting some mids that sound a bit papery. Let's AB this one. Next up is the FGS. What I'm mostly doing here is cutting some low mids. I don't like those frequencies in rock bass guitars much. I'm also cutting out quite some sub lows. Everything underneath about 60 hertz is being cut out. Let's AB this one. So cutting those low mids really helps to make the bass sound bigger. We've also got some compression going on here. I like how this compressor sounds on the bass. It really helps even it out. Finally, Bomber. Bomber sounds great on bass. It really helps to bring the bass out of the mix even more. Let's AB. Let's AB with the full rack on and off. It sounds nice and tight with all the processing going on. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to stay up to date, please hit subscribe or follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash sonicdrivestudio. Stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching.